What is up, guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Balhalla. My name is Splattercat. Happy to have you here today. We had a flawless day yesterday. A flawless ass day. It was pretty good. We slang those beers like we knew what we was doing for once. So we've got our Nano Camo app now, which means I can customize my house. I mean, I guess we can try it out. What is mascot? So Camo Tan is our mascot. She's designed by veteran character designer from Suke Bon Games, career in 51. Birthday, 2401. Okay, that's fine. She likes Musashi, apparently. Oh, the Musashi battleship, my bad. I thought they were talking about Miyamoto. Miyamoto Musashi. Uh, about... Nano Camo is a company founded in 2068 and a pioneer of the nanomachine fabric capable of real-time texture swapping. Meant for military use, we bring our products to the general public at the most affordable prices. Okay, so we can... It costs 200 bucks? I thought I already bought the nano cam. Oh, you gotta buy the different nano camo stuff. So what does this do for me, right? I want to do this one. Huh? Is it already? Oh, it's on my it's on my bed right now. Is that the only part that's nano camo? I thought the whole room was gonna be like in the theme. Eh, I don't know. Seems like a bad way to burn a Christmas present. I don't know. It just makes your bed change colors. I don't know if I would spend money on that, personally. Let's see what's going on with the augmented eye. Alarms rise as the Apollo Trust hijacked screens at downtown Casanova announced what seems to be a terrorist threat aimed at the Apollo Trust Bank. The information suggests that a currently unidentified bomber is already inside the building. The White Knights counterterrorism unit responded to the threat immediately. However, the bank was then locked down by an external network attack. We might be dealing with a dual threat here, CTU's Chloe Bauer told a E. The bank has been sealed shut using its own disaster prevention system. However, the, none of the terminals at the bank were working at the time. The building is basically sealed at this point. The hostages are trapped. The Augmented Eye is being attacked. Hey, everyone. We take your, serious, sir, your security seriously here at Augmented Eye, and we have the obligation to disclose the recent article on Alice Rabbit were vandalized by who we think is Alice Rabbit themselves or a very good impersonator. We want to extend our apologies and inform that we'll be limiting our coverage of Alice Rabbit to just factual news and not entertainment pieces. Sincerely, AE staff. Let's see, the point at which... The point at which any force, even if it's like tabloid shit, I feel like the point at which anybody is censoring free speech, they become the bad guy. I know they're trying to pin Alice Rabbit as like the good guy right now, like the rebellion. But like, you're censoring, you're censoring news. Regardless of whether it's good news or bad news, you're still... You're still, thank God I don't pay these fuckers for a sub. Pollution to reach historic levels. That's fun. That's enjoyable. Uh, what else do we have going on? I mean, we can see what's going on with Kira Miki. We've got Danger You. A white knight just beat me up. I'm fucking crying right now. Let me tell you the story. Listen to a story all about how a white knight got me beat all down. <laughs> Wait for OP to do That's what I would have put in for the next line. I would have made the entire... I would have done the entire Fresh Prince rap about how he got beat up by a white knight. Because I'm an asshole. <laughs> the internet's a messed up place. I'm here anyways. Here it goes. I was going home after buying groceries at the store. I was very tired because I had to line up for hours just to buy milk. And when I'm faintly, or I'm finally out of there, a group of three white knights stopped me and started asking for my ID. They also wanted to see my bag and check if I wasn't a scalper. Once they saw everything was in order, they asked me for a military service ID. And I was like, what the fuck? Why would I have that on me? And there's no enforced conscription anymore. It doesn't make sense. Because I didn't have it on me, they asked for money or else they plant drugs on me. I, of course, refused, but they'd lose their patience and one of them hit me in the temple with a gun and I was bleeding like crazy on the floor, so they just took my groceries and left. Holy shit, man. I fucking hate this place. I hate it so much. I want to leave this fucking hellhole. I'm so tired of this shit every fucking day. Why would they close that thread? I don't know. Streaming Chan thread. Streaming Chan went nuts last night. Where the hell is she now? I don't even recognize the place she's at right now. It doesn't look pretty either. At least she's getting some rest. What did I miss? Streaming Chan went to Valhalla, got a bit drunk, and got the hell out of there all hyper. Tried to steal snacks from a vending machine, but the thing defended itself with an electric shock. I'm gonna marry Streaming Chan. That's freaking nuts. You just don't mess with these things. She fell asleep from the shock, as expected from Streaming Chan. I just hope nothing happens to her while she lays there. Falls asleep at shoddy backstreet in Glitch City. She'll be fine. God. We already know about the Apollo Bank thing, so I figure let's go back to work and see what unfolds here at Valhalla, shall we? Valhalla time! Good evening. Huh? Oh, I didn't expect you today. I was waiting for you to call and say you wouldn't be coming or something. Things at the Apollo Bank are getting ugly, so that means more people will be looking for a drink. 
Oh, you could take a break, you know. You're quite the hard worker. And the streets aren't exactly safe right now. Well, they've never been when you get down to it. And besides, I can't afford to not come, or I can't afford to not come, what with the bar closing soon. I wonder if any bars used impending closure as a means of getting their employees to work. If I found out my job was shutting down, I'd just quit right there. I'd be like, eh, I'm taking a couple weeks off. That's it, I'll put in some resumes and shit, but sounds like it's time for some time off. I don't know, when I get fired, I tend to take like a month or two off, and I'm just like, eh. Or I get laid off, I've been laid off and I've been fired. Both suck. I think laid off hurts more though. Because when you get fired, you actually did something wrong. But then again, I've got that don't give a shit attitude where I'm just like, meh, yep, you've called me out on it right now, but you're doing me a favor, so at least I don't have to come to this shitty place anymore. All right. Whereas when you get laid off, it's kind of like, I need this job right now. Because if I'm doing shit that could get me fired anyways, chances are I probably don't care about the job in the first place. Seems like the total opposite would happen. Not to mention, I get bored out of my brains in my apartment, so I'd rather come here anyways. What'd you say? Nothing important. Uh, Gil isn't back yet? Nope. I wouldn't worry too much about him, though. If you say so. Hey, uh, what's this bottle? That's a bottle of absinthe that I had at home. I want to have it appraised, but the guy said that without the label, there's not much value to it. It's still a nice bottle of absinthe, though. I see. You gonna serve it today? It looks like the absinthe can be detected by the station's database, so it's not counterfeit. I'll serve it if the customers ask for it. Sounds good. Want me to serve you a glass of it? I'll pass. Absence not my kind of thing. Well then, I will be in my office. Careful with that thing. Why am I serving my own personal liquor at the bar? Shouldn't I get to keep 100% if I serve my own personal liquor? Or at least like 80%. I mean, yes, you're supplying the location, but I'm supplying you with your inventory. So I feel like we gotta come across here and like, we gotta meet, gotta meet in the middle. Alright then. Uh, let's mix some things up. We've done Welcome to Valhalla first. Do, 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 do. We've been doing it first for a while, so we'll go with like... Ooh, I like that one. We'll go with this one right here. Yup, sounds like a training montage. Like I'm gonna be out in the snow, like, punching hanging meat. And then we got Dawn Approaches. The answer lies within... Reminiscence. Ooh! Time to serve, mix, and drink lives. Yay. Wait, that's not how it goes. Uh, no one's here to retort. Man, it feels lonely without Gil here. I just hope the restlessness in the streets doesn't lead to dangerous or weird types coming in here. I bet you it will. Good evening. Holy shit, that was a record-breaking jinx. Welcome to Valhalla. Uh, what can I get for you? Let's see. I will have a green fairy. A green fairy. Blue fairy, sorry, absinthe bottle distracted me. Alright, so... Oh, he wanted a blue fairy. She wanted me to buy a fan, and I didn't buy a fan because I'm worried we're not going to have enough money. And so anyways... We'll give her some adult, and we'll give it it. I don't know what to call it right now. Age and mix. Blue fairy. There you go. Nice, yeah. This is the thing. So, um... How are you gonna... Oh, you can grab stuff. Should have figured as much. You can drink things? And eight. We have the same system. Let them do. Can I ask you something, er, uh, miss? Call me Taylor. Just Taylor. And yes, a cutie like you can ask me anything. All right, Taylor. You have to be the first person I've met that didn't go, okay, just Taylor. Yeah, it was too easy. You're a brain in a jar, right? I'm sure I'm not a hologram of that, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm a bona fide human brain in a jar. So how and why? What? Does my handsomeness make you speechless? You're not something a girl sees every day. And that's saying quite a bit in these parts. Fear not, for I have speech prepared for just these situations. A speech? You're seeing one of the five living, bottled brains of the world. We are brains living in conditions that allow us to exist as any other humanoid creature. All while computers in our jaws scan our activities. Your activities? What activities could a floating brain get up to? In a slow but steady manner, we are helping the world understand the inner workings of nature's most complex computer. I'm guessing you prepared that after being asked the same question too many times, huh? 
Not out of exasperation or anything like that. Mind you! I just wanted to have something thoughtful prepared. I don't know why he has a robot voice, because all the other robots in the game have a normal voice. I just feel like he should have a robot voice. Look, I even have a couple of pamphlets with me. You want one? Sure. What brings one of our world's five brains in jars to this place, though? Oh, from around here, actually. I just wanted to take a walk for the first time in quite a bit of time. Have you come here before? Sadly, no. Otherwise, I'd remember a cute face like yours. Speaking of which, can I have your name? Um, it's Jill. Jill. That is a really cute name. Thank you? Say, weren't you scared of going outside today, what with the commotion around and all? It didn't stop you from coming here either, did it? Yeah, you're right. It's gonna take more than cryptic but ominous news to stop me. You're awfully energetic, you know that? Sorry, does it bother you? Nope, not at all. Just that I figured a brain in a jar wouldn't be... so happy. While I was alive, my body got to a point where there wasn't much I could do. This new state of existence allows me to accomplish more than I ever could before. Plus, I'm doing something that will help people in the long run. Wouldn't you be happy? I wonder. Do you want to make me happy, Jill? He's gonna ask me for, like, a brain blowjob. Depends on what it takes. Don't worry, just give me a beer. Alright then, I'll make you happy. Apparently I just have to memorize what he wanted now because I didn't buy her a desk fan. Even though it said it wasn't hot. It was like, Jill wants a desk fan, even though it's not hot. And I'm like, alright, whatever. Here, your beer. Ah, yes. No matter what happens, beer's always good. See, we're too far in now. I could change the robot voice, but we're too far in. It takes dedication. Hey, Taylor. Can I ask something a bit indiscreet? You can ask anything you want. While you had your other body, were you male or female? Hmm. That's actually quite the question. Especially considering I don't really know the answer either. You don't? I mean, I remember my name was Taylor. In fact, I remember every detail of my life, but that one thing's a bit blurry. Blurry. Yeah, the team that put me here said it might be a side effect of the whole process. So you just like forget your gender? But you remember like all the other stuff like your name. I don't know. It seems like an odd side effect. It seems like somebody's maybe like wiped his brain out. But my family and friends say that even in life, I didn't put too much thought into questions about gender. So in the end, we're back to square uno. Wait, don't you have pictures or anything else? To be honest, I've chosen not to look too deeply into my old identity. Partly because I'm happier in this ambiguous state. But also because I have this gut feeling I'm not psychologically prepared to see what I look like. And you know if a brain in a jar isn't psychologically prepared, nobody is. Then again, if you really boil it down, that's all that human beings are, is like a brain in a biological jar. Oh, you know. I don't know. I feel like if I do, I might crumble. Damn. Is that a curiosity in a third-person scenario? How should one refer to you? By my name. I guess that makes sense. If you absolutely need to use pronouns, refer to me like you'd refer to any other house appliance. It? A TV or anything like that. An it. <laughs> Are you okay with that? In the end, even if I can speak, I'm just an object. That's actually something I've internalized a long time ago, even with my original body. I see. If that doesn't make you comfortable, please feel free to use neutral pronouns. To be honest, you can refer to me however you want. I don't really pay mind to that. But this isn't about what makes me comfortable. You know what the downside to this body is? I can't get drunk. If you want to call that a downside. If you wanted to drink alcohol for the taste, there are many alternatives. Drunkenness is part of the whole experience. Why though? Lilim can get drunk with no problem. Yes, but in that case, their brain's a computer attached to their body. Getting drunk causes their brains to reduce the input speed to their bodies. Depending on the model, their drunk subroutine might throw in a different behavioral cycle even. It's hard to get drunk when the whole point of you being in a jar is figuring out exactly how you work. Yeah, you're right. Hey, Jill. Hey, Alma. Just, oh, Alma? 
Where's the courtesy one would expect from the plebeian bar staff? Welcome to Valhalla. What can I get for you? Happy? Not when you put it like that. Why, hello there, beautiful. Whoa! <laughs> you hurt my feelings with that, darling. Sorry, I don't see talking disembodied brains every day. I mean, I did work a summer in Lillian Maintenance, but even then, those were talking heads. Oh, don't worry about it. At least you're not running or fainting. Your name was Alma, right? Uh, your name was Alma, right? I am Taylor. Nice to meet you, Taylor. Say, Alma, can I buy you a drink? Sorry, I only date people who are at least 50% organic and have at least one face. Hmm. I know just what to strive for then. Just kidding. It'd make me happy to make you happy by buying a drink. Does that bother you? I guess if Jill's the bartender, I don't have a problem with that. Awesome. I'll pay for your next drink then. How does a disembodied brain earn money? What will you have? I'll have a cobalt velvet. And you, Taylor? I'm fine, actually. You're going to have me drink alone. I don't want to drink that much. All right, then. Cobalt Velvet. We got two Adelaide, three Flanner Guide, one, two, three, four, five, Karma Train on the rocks and mixed. Cobalt Velvet. Your drink. Hope you enjoy it. You know, you've been nicer to me these past minutes than at least three guys have been in the last year. Judging from the way you two talk, I'm guessing you've been a client here for a while now, right? For about a half a year or so, if memory serves right. Really? One would think it's been longer. Hmm. Feels like it's been longer. Shut up. You love me and you know it. So you just started coming in here and that was it? Well, the first time I came here, the other guy... Uh, speaking of which, where's Pablo? Jillian. Archimedes. Don't know. He's adventuring or something. Anyways, the other guy served me the first time I came here. Nothing unusual there. The next time I showed up, Jill here was serving, and I don't know. I feel like she just gets me. There's this chemistry. We click. <laughs> we click, she says. The fact that I feel more chemistry with her than many other people is kind of sad, though. It's always good to see a nice friendship. Sadly, it's getting late, and I've got to go. Oh, thank God. I don't want to do robot voice anymore. I'll leave you two lovely ladies alone. See ya! Bye. Please come again. So is he on, like, rollers? Does he have, like, tank treads? Or, like, how does he get around? I'm curious. That tailor sure was nice. A bit weird at first, though. Apparently one of five brains being studied by scientists or something. There's a summary of it in this pamphlet. Let's see. Oh, yeah, I've heard of them before. Can't believe I actually met one. Say, Alma, how many people are there in your family? Just That was a weird segue. Well, aside from my mom and my dad, we are five si- No, sorry, four sisters and one brother. Funnily enough, we all have names that start with the first five letters in the alphabet. So you're the oldest one. Nah, I'm actually the middle kid. Ah, your parents didn't love you. You're the middle kid. <laughs> you gotta be the oldest or the youngest, otherwise your bargaining power goes down the drain. <laughs> you're the middle kid, but your name starts with an A. Don't think too much about it. I never said the order reflected our ages. See, I'm the oldest, so... Sure. What are the benefits of being the oldest? Well, being the oldest, your parents try out all their crappy ter like parenting techniques on you. And so you, they tend to be more strict with the older child, but then they realize it doesn't work and it just turns you into a little criminal. And so then with your younger siblings, they just let them do whatever the hell they want. And so you get kind of spiteful about that. But at the same time, I was an only child for a while. And so you get the benefit of being an only child too for a bit. And plus, I, I think all parents love the oldest the most. I'm not going to... I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie. I'm pretty sure they love the oldest the most. It's just you were the first one to come along. That means you got a head start in the love race. You've got you've got invested equity when it comes to love that the younger siblings like. There's like five years of love that they don't even have, you know. So unless I disappear for like five years, she'll never catch up. Don't think about it too much. I never said the order reflected our ages. My sister Carlotta's the eldest one, and then there's Diana just before me. Then comes Eva, and at the bottom lies Bella. Well. The youngest one is Bernardo. You never been alone, I'm guessing? Can't complain about that, I guess. It helps that we were never five in the same house. By the time Evita and Bernie were born, Diana and Carlotta had already moved. Speaking of family, today I came because I need a break from everything that's been going on with them. You live with them? 
Nah, but Evita and Bernie do. Not to mention I visit them almost every day. Anyways, my second eldest sister, Diana, just separated from her husband. It's not even been a week, but she's already got some other guy in her bed. She left her kid with the husband's parents and pretty much forgot about him. That means she was probably banging the dude before she left her husband. Just saying, when they move quick like that, when they move quick like that, that's usually just what I assume. Never mind the fact that they need to go to school and all that. Damn. Diana's life has always been messy, but these days she's really making it big. She wants time for herself to live her life. She didn't think about that when she married a guy at 20. She didn't think about that when she married a guy she'd only known for like three months. You should take your own advice. Hey, I'd never marry anybody that could catch my attention so quickly, alright? Sure, there was that one time when it almost happened, but I blame the damn stadium kiss cam. The kiss cam? I was going out with a guy my little sister introduced to me. Seems it was her best friend's brother or something. We went out to a couple times and he invited me to a basketball game. The mood was nice, but then later the kiss cam focused on us and instead of kissing me he proposed. I almost got caught in the mood and accepted. Huh. So I take it you rejected him in a stadium on the fucking kiss cam? He went out for like three weeks. I don't know. Maybe he wanted to get in my pants with the old sex on the wedding night line. But I honest to God can't understand why he thought it would be a good idea. That sounds too convoluted, you know. Proposing a waiting for the wedding night just for sex. Never underestimate the lengths a man is willing to go to get you in there. It's true. It's true. A as a lifelong man. Hmm. The plot runs thick. The plot runs very, very thick. It's subconscious, too. You don't even do it like... It's a natural process just in your head. You don't even do it by choice. It's just like all these weird little, like, spider webs start connecting in your brain and being like... <laughs> and, like, you try to take them down because you got, like, a little webber up in your brain and you try to webster and you're trying to, like, get them down. But I'm like, stop it! You were sabotaging an otherwise healthy relationship. Go away! But it doesn't work. I've seen more convoluted plots over the years. I'm feeling tempted to ask, but you know what? I'm gonna pass on that one. Want anything else? Uh, what's that bottle? Some bottle of absinthe I found at home. It's unlabeled, so it's not that valuable. Do you know how to serve it? I'd actually need some kind of spoon to perch a cube of sugar, but the station does all that for me. You want some absinthe then? Sure, let's try it. Alright, so Pute Green Fairy. Yeah, I don't think the coloration's supposed to... It's supposed to be a little bit, uh... So what do I do once that's in there? I just like... Alright. <laughs> Careful. It's a strong drink. I'll tell you if it's strong or not. And indeed it is. Holy shit. You okay? I'll be fine. I had worse in college. What did you do in college, by the way? Jaeger bombs, giant taco pizzas, a cute student teacher. We all did a, <laughs> a cute student teacher at some point in college. I'm talking about studies, woman. I know, I know. I'm a computer engineering dropout. A dropout? I was getting fed up with the whole make programs for other people thing. I see. Alright, now it's my turn to ask some questions. And when that's done, that's the end of the episode. My name is Splattercat. This is Valhalla. We will answer her questions in the next episode. Bye, everybody. I'll see y'all later.